Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Arpita Karva and this is my second video in the series of decoding the new education policy 2020. So yes guys, there's a big news and a very very historic moment for the Indian uh, students out there because Prakash Javedkar came up with the new education policy 2020 which highlighted some key changes in the entire education system. In the previous video, I looked at the major reasons why this change was made and I also explained to you briefly the major changes that are going to happen in the school level education. But as I went through the comments, there were so many students who wanted to know that what about the higher education? What about the college level education? What are the key changes which are there in the policy? Is there something we need to be afraid of? Is there something we need to make ourselves prepared of in the upcoming years? So yes, guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about each and every important change which was listed in the policy, which concerns to the college level or higher level education. I'm going to decode it in such a way that it becomes really simple for you to digest because a lot of students called me and said that when they go through the policy it seems like really complicated document but my effort here is to simplify it so much that you will have a very clear picture about where you stand and where you will be headed in the next few years. So let's get started. The first important change that they have made is the entire process of higher education. Right now, if you look at the process, it begins with bachelors. Then you have to do your masters. Then if you want to do research, you enroll yourself in a MPhil program and finally you complete your PhD degree. Now this four step process has been changed to a three step process. So now you have to enroll yourself in a bachelor's program or an undergraduate program as they call it now. Then you do a post graduation. Finally, you enroll yourself in PhD. There is no MPhil. MPhil has been taken out of the process. This is a really big change. So there is no MPhil. You have undergraduate, postgraduate and then you have the doctorate program. Another important change which you must understand here is that the bachelor's program which was earlier of three years is now of four years but you have the option to study or not to study the fourth year. We're going to look at the bachelor's program in detail because that is where the major masala lies. They have made some really amazing changes in the bachelor's program because their aim by 2035 is to ensure that at least 50% students complete their higher education. So in order to achieve that goal, they have to make certain changes in the program. They have to give certain perks to the students so that more and more students are motivated to complete their higher education. The bachelor's program has been broken up into four parts. The first year is known as the certificate program. The second year is known as the diploma program. The third year is the bachelor's degree program. And the fourth year is research specific program program. So now what you have in your hand is that suppose you enroll yourself in a college and after two years there was a medical emergency or there was some financial trouble because of which you have to drop out from your college. So now you have the option to enroll yourself again in the college in future from the third year itself. You don't have to repeat the first and second year. Isn't that amazing? Like right now, think of a situation. There's a student who enrolls himself in a bachelor's program. After two years, he has to drop out of the college because of some or the other reason. And after five years, he decides that he wants to again start his undergraduate degree. So in order to do that, he have to repeat the first and second year again, in spite of the fact that he has cleared the exams of first and second years five years ago. Now there is a big change here. They have introduced the system of multiple entry and exit. You can enroll in a program after one year if you want to take a break. You can take a break and you will be given the first year certificate. After that, when you will enroll yourself again in the undergraduate program, you have to start studying from the second year. You don't have to repeat the first year. So you can exit anytime you want. You will have that particular degree or certificate with you. And then after 
some time if you want to re-enroll yourself you will start your studies from that point let's take this uh, as an example suppose if you look at your bachelor's uh, course there is this stage one two and three you dropped out at stage two now when you will again enroll yourself in the bachelor's program you will have to enroll yourself and start studying from point b from stage two rather than from stage one unlike right now so right now whenever you drop out you will have to start from first year now they have made this change that if you have dropped out after third year the next time you enroll yourself you will start studying from the fourth year so this is the concept of multiple entry and exit another amazing thing that has been lined up for you is the credit based system so right now what we have is that we have different certificates that you have to collect you have a bachelor's degree then you have your master's degree then if you have done a diploma then that is a certificate and there are so many certificates which you have to keep in place now that everything is becoming online there is no certificate system so just like you have a bank account where anybody who deposits money in your bank account is going to be reflected there just like that we have a credit based system so you enroll yourself in any program your marks will be added in that particular online system against your name and anybody who would like to check your records can just type your name can type the important credentials and will get all the marks of your bachelor's, master's, PhD, all the extracurricular activities you have enrolled yourself in, any diploma, degree or certificate courses you have enrolled yourself in, all of that will be reflected at one place. So it's just like your bank account. Everything related to your um, accounts will be reflected in your bank. Similarly, anything related to your academics will be reflected in that credit-based system. So this will make the process a lot more easier you don't need to submit certificates everywhere saying that this is when I did my masters this is where I did my uh, PhD from they just need to know your name and credentials and they can check all the information at one place so it's just like Aadhaar card if I have your Aadhaar number I can get all the details about you where do you live your phone number your photograph your PAN card all the details will be reflected with that one Aadhaar number just like like that there will be a credit based system and there will be a pool where all the students data will be collected and it will be available online for anybody to check and cross check another really interesting thing that has been added in the education policy is the cap on the fees in regards to the private colleges and universities so far if you look at certain colleges in india you will find that they are charging really high fees um, um, some of my friends are enrolled in bangalore in colleges in pune and their fees is like 8 lakh per semester now this is a fees which not everybody can afford right so because of this a lot of people don't even think of getting into a college because the education is like really really costly so in order to cut down the cost in order to ensure that by 2035 at least 50 percent people are through with their higher education the government has introduced a cap on the fees of private colleges and universities any college can now not uh, charge the fees they want there is a maximum cap any college will have to charge the fees below that cap for example if the cap is 1 lakh per year no college can charge more than 1 lakh per year in spite of the course that the student is enrolled in they have to charge below that so this is a really really amazing thing that they have done in order to make the higher education cost effective pocket friendly and i hope that with this measure a lot of students are going to take the initiative of enrolling themselves in bachelor's program in completing their undergraduate degree course in the past video uh, in this particular series of new education policy i also chalked out reasons why the government has done this and how it is going to benefit the future generations i also looked at the important changes they have made in the school level education so if you have not watched that video i think you should do it right now because it is very important for anybody in india right now to be aware of the new education policy which is going to be a very important milestone in the success of indian economy 
Apart from that, if you have any other questions or doubts related to the new education policy, don't forget to put that in the comment section below. I'll keep on addressing these doubts as and when they come in my upcoming videos. If you have not subscribed to the channel, I don't think I should tell you to do that because you are smart enough to do it on your own. So with that note, I would like to take your leave. I hope this lecture made sense. But before you go, let me tell you one important fact that the GDP till now that was employed to education sector was 4.4. Now, from this year onwards, Indian government is going to put 6% of the GDP in education sector and this is a game changer. I'm telling you guys, the number might seem to be really less, 4.4 to 6%. It doesn't seem to be a drastic difference, but if you look at the numbers inside this 4%, inside the 6%, that is going to create the difference. So they have started focusing more on the education system because they know that the Indian youth are going to be the foundation stone for future. So they must invest in their education. All these great visionaries and thinkers have always stated that if you want to develop a country, you must focus on the education. And this is what Indian government has started to do that. So I would like to thank them from the core of my heart for taking these great measures. And I hope that in the coming few years, we are going to see an entirely new system with new enthusiasm and I'm sure that this new system is going to give results very soon in the future. So that's it for this video lecture. I'll meet you very soon in the next lecture. Till the time I meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarva.com.